three stoves for you for breakfast. All right. <laughs> the humble abode. All right, let's get. Time to roll. What do you think of my place? I done all that woodwork myself. Yeah. The place was gutted when I bought it. I like it. Calendar's but. a year old. I need to replace the calendar. Oh. Morning, Casey. Morning, Robert. <laughs> We'll catch some coyotes. All right, well, we can do that. All right. Sleep good? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> We're in southwest Kansas. We're just below Garden City right now, working parts of three counties. Uh, it's the 22nd of January. It's getting a little late for skinning coyotes, but we're still working for higher jobs where they're paying us to do the coyote control. Uh, several of these are corporate accounts. Uh, CAFOs, Confined Animal Feeding Operations, and a couple of ranchers. And uh, a variety of reasons why they're paying for coyote control. Everything from keeping the coyotes off of the plastic where they're destroying the plastic on top of the high moisture corn piles to disease vector work where these coyotes are running up and down the feed bunks tracking mucus and snot from this one sick pen to the healthy cattle and the next pen's on down the fence line bunks. Uh, as far as the corporate accounts. Uh, have a couple of dairy accounts where last year they actually paid workmen comp claims uh, where they actually had workers that got bit for, by coyotes while they were cleaning up the afterbirth after the milk cow had calved and, and the, uh, the employee got bit by a coyote and they had to pay workmen's comp claims. None of these corporate accounts, or very few of them, allow guns on the property so uh, we catch these coyotes and we dispatch them by hand. There's no guns allowed. They can't have an employee shooting at a coyote when he jumps out and runs through a bunch of fat cattle or around a bunch of milk cows and have an employee shooting a cow by accident. So there's no firearms allowed. Anyway, that's why trapping is necessary. There's no calling, there's no shooting, there's no firearms. Uh, trapping's the only way to go at them and the preferred method. Being this late in the season, this late in January, sometimes the coyotes will hold and the fur won't break. Uh, but it depends on the vegetation. This country had a lot of rainfall up through the early summer, so there's a lot of vegetation. The tumbleweeds and the weeds are tall, and those coyotes are in those weeds hunting rabbits, hunting mice, hunting rats, and they go to the dry corners, go in those weeds to bed during the day, and it wears on the fur or drags on the fur when those coyotes are running and walking through those tall weeds. And uh, Consequently, the coyotes are breaking a little earlier this year, and we're gonna see some fur damage, and ones that are getting rubbed, getting broke, we won't skin for the fur market. The market's down, but uh, some years on a drought year, where it's dry in the year and you don't have this heavy vegetation, the coyotes will hold and the fur will hold good for another couple of weeks on up into February, but this was not one of those years. thing that most trappers don't realize especially when they're first starting if you look these sets are all right here where these coyotes are already walking the sets are all right on the trails where the coyotes are already at we're not trying to pull that coyote five six feet or ten yards or whatever from where he's already at the dirt doesn't lie to you you read the dirt you see where the coyotes at and that's where those sets go you've got to put those sets right underneath foot where that coyote's already at he's got to make him trip over those sets even if he's not hungry he will stop and mark that just like another cow has been here and you make catches like this all day long no matter what brand the trap you use hand tension is one of the most important things <laughs> we're using coyote urine on these sets that urine's got a lot of uh, salt in it and uh you're gonna have rabbits coming up here and taking dust baths and stuff on top of your trap bed you run three four five pounds of pan tension keep that pan pretty stiff you end up with a good solid foot catch. We don't catch the incidentals. We don't have the rabbits tripping the traps, getting caught where they're coming to the cow urine, looking for the salt. So always run a stiff pan. So, if you notice, 
never short on trap tags on the trap. Always wrap one around the trap chain, trap frame, and then you got a couple more down on the chain. But uh, different states require different equip, uh, different information <clears throat> as far as trapper's ID number, name, and mailing address. Nebraska requires your uh, driver's license number on the trap tag, so lots of information on the trap. People worry about identity theft. They steal a trap. They got everything most of us trappers have for identity. What trap you running there, Robert? It's a number three Duke. Trap set. What'd you do to it? That trap's 20 years old. Uh, that trap's seen seen work in 15 states, I suppose. Uh, trap's been four coiled. Pan's been overhauled. It's got what we'll call a night latch. It's got a second little notch here. Here, put the dog in a pan. When you pull it back, you'll hear it click right there. And away you can feel it in the dark when it's Anyway, set for a hair trigger within that second notch. Pan's been shimmed, trap's been four coiled, base plated, and extra swivels and added to the chain and whatnot. So, uh, to be honest with you, this trap is no different than a than a car racing a NASCAR in the Indy 500. They all start out as Chevys or Fords, supposedly, and we modify them from there and go on with them. But uh, anyway, the round the jaw, you see the majority of the traps I run are all round the jaw. When the ground gets uh, when we get moisture, we're fighting frozen ground, it's wet, it's, uh, the clay gets heavy. These traps, when they fire, around the jaw, all the pressure is exerted to the outside of the circle and they unzipper, basically when they come up, when they bust through in high speed. Square jaw trap, you've got four inches on both sides where that power is dispersed. And it makes it really hard for those square jaw traps to come up where a round jaw trap will function. Keep making the catch and keep making your money. Round, jaws, round jaw traps pay the bills. Dude, that's where we disagree, because I use a lot of square jaws. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the cool thing about trapping, is there's so many variations, so many things you can do. But like you said, as long as you can make it work for yourself, you can catch coyotes. Yep. Well, look at that trap. I bet I bought that trap in the mid-90s early 90s you know and and uh look how many years has been in service you know it's it's been around a long time that trap's probably 25 years old so what are you what are you going to say to the people that are going to watch this video and say <laughs> where's your gloves at well we really don't worry about scent control. That's pretty well a wives' tale. The only reason I wear gloves is to keep my hands from getting all nasty. Yeah. Beat up. It gets cold. The easiest way to set a long spring is to set one on each side. Of course, I'm not going to struggle with one in front of the camera, like so. Long spring's no different than any other trap. You gotta make sure that when you come out of the hole center line, you gotta remember where the coyote's gonna stand when you put his nose in the hole. So you've gotta be offset from center, just two inches.
You're always checking your depth. Make sure you've got enough dirt over the pan cover. You're looking for about three eighths of an inch, about like this. Like I said, come out center line, and that coyote's gonna be standing here or here. The last place you wanna put that trap pan is dead center, because he'll never step here. When he sticks his nose in a hole, he's standing like this. So the trap pan needs to be here or here. Right here's the trap pan. What are you gonna do to keep him from stepping to the right? <laughs> he'll, he'll find it. <laughs> Part of a muskrat. A little bit of blood around the hole. It doesn't get any more natural. Give him a shot of coyote yarn. Every coyote coming through here, he can't help himself. It's no different than a wounded prairie dog or anything else. This is how they make their living and it's natural and they'll fight each other to get there. Casey, we've got eight sets up here where the cow trails all across the road. There's one, two, there's three. Looks like I can see five head out of the eight traps so far up here where everything kind of comes together up here on this flat on this corner. You see them? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. That'll work. All right. 